As you've seen in some polls, uh, there's a support of about 40% in other provinces. I think also that uh, relationship uh, between other provinces and uh, countries like France or Germany, uh, there's a lot of respect. And I think uh, uh, they have to admit that it's a choice made by the Quebecers. Quebec Premier François Legault put out a list of demands today that he would like all of the federal party leaders to answer during this election campaign. For one, he wants the leaders to respect Bill 21, his province's controversial law banning religious symbols worn by people of authority in the public sector. Premier Legault is also asking for more control over things like taxes and immigration. Christopher Skeed is the parliamentary assistant to the Premier for relations with English-speaking Quebecers. He joins us now, I believe, from Quebec City. Is that correct, sir? That's correct. <laughs> nice, to, in Quebec City. Uh, nice to see you, Mr. Skeed. Thanks, thanks for joining. Let me start on Bill 21, because the Premier said that he wants federal leaders not only to respect the law, but do it by pledging not to participate or intervene in any legal challenges against it. Every leader, to my, to my knowledge, and I've listened to all their answers on this subject, has basically tiptoed around it, and, and nobody has said that they definitely will intervene. So why does the Premier, why does your government feel the need to ask that they not? Well, this has nothing to do with whether or not we're for Bill 21 or not. It has to do with respecting provincial jurisdictions. That's the argument that the Premier is laying out, is saying, let's respect what Quebecers did, and let's leave it in the hands of Quebecers to decide whether or not this is something that should be. Mr. Trudeau, the leader of the Liberal Party, has been the most direct, I guess, in saying that he hasn't ruled out legal intervention. He doesn't see the case for it right now, uh, but he won't rule it out. What's your reaction to that? I mean, listen, we're not going to get involved into the he said, she said. Ideally, uh, it would be nice to get some clear answers, but ultimately, it's up to the voters of Quebec. And, but you know, I think I heard it in your intro. Quebec is a battleground. So I think it would behoove uh, all the leaders to be clear on this just for clarity. Let me ask you then about the sort of electoral calculation in Quebec. Is this, is this sort of wish list from your government an effort to seize on that, to capitalize on the significance? I mean, Quebec is always significant. I don't want to minimize that at all in every federal election, but it seems even more so in this one. Well, with the end of sovereignty, you know, Quebec is in play, and I think that's an important thing. Quebec is finally ready to re-engage with the Federation, and what does that mean, right? And, and historically, uh, Every premier in Quebec has always drawn up a list of things that we would like in order to, uh, you know, enjoy our particularity within, within this federation. Do you think that Quebec will decide this election? I hope so. I think uh, as a Quebec m and it would be great if we could hold uh, the balance of power, regardless of what it is, regardless of the party. It'd be nice to know that our issues are taken to Ottawa, which I think has been the historical weakness of previous elections, right? So I think it's good that we're, we're back at the table and we're ready to take our place. Do you think uh, that your government or will, is there any plan to uh, come out with a position on any of the parties? I mean, you've put out very specific demands. If there is one, let's say, uh, that a party that comes and satisfies all those demands, would you ever endorse that party? One of the things that our, the Premier made clear at our recent caucus was that we're not allowed to get involved in this, in this election. Uh, he, he's barred us from getting active. And I think that's smart. I think we're going to work with whatever government uh, Quebecers send to Ottawa. And that's, what, that's our pledge. We're going to be constructive with who, whoever it is. That's interesting. So you can't campaign, no, no, n nobody can, no MNA can campaign, campaign anywhere? No, yeah, he asked us not to get involved, and I think it's a wise decision. I think it's, uh, I think it's important to send a signal that regardless of whoever Quebecers send to Ottawa, we're going to work with them in a constructive and, and uh, in a good faith way. What do you think of other premiers or uh, provincial representatives who do campaign on behalf of a, a, a party specifically? I, I think the dynamic in Quebec is very different. Uh, we, you know, the, in the rest of Canada, you tend to have the uh, left-right dynamic, the blue-red dynamic, even the orange dynamic. Here, it's complicated by the bloc uh, a little bit. So I think it's, it's, it's a very different play here in Quebec. I think it's a wise decision. Okay, let me ask you about some of uh, another issue, and you, you highlighted it when you talked about the jurisdictional issue. Uh, there is also a lot of conversation right now around jurisdiction when it comes to large infrastructure projects, speculatively speaking, like a pipeline. And Jagmeet Singh has come out saying that uh, effectively he would give, if he formed government, Quebec a veto. What do you think of that promise? I think, uh, I think Quebecers are listening to see what the various federal leaders are offering Quebecers. Uh, we've been very clear, our government's been very clear that there is uh, no social acceptability for those types of projects other than the natural gas one at GNL and Saguenay. So, you know, if a, if a member of uh, one of the people campaigning were to come out and say that they would respect that, I think Quebecers would listen. But again, ultimately, it's up to Quebecers as a whole to decide, and we'll see uh, where the chips fall. 
Should other provinces have the same uh, th the same right of refusal? If if a pipeline is going through anyone's pro any any province, should that province be able to say no to it? Speaking for me, I, I tend to be somebody who uh, you know respects what it is that we live in, which is a federation. And a federation, by definition, means that we have to consult with our with our member uh, states. So, uh, for me personally, uh, that's something I would uh, I would probably agree to uh, more often than not. But you know. Uh, there's as many opinions as there are points of views. Does it, does it negate or deflate at all the significance of the federal government in and of itself? Like the federal government makes a decision that something is in the national interest and if they have to then appease every single province that is potentially affected by that project that they have deemed in the national interest, what's the point of a federal government? Well, you're right, which is why I, I kind of hedged on my answer. It's not right. a 100% all the time, uh, you know, issue. Uh, but at the same token, I, I tend to say that uh, sometimes the federal government in, in such a large territory like Canada can sometimes be, you know, uh, can miss something, some genuine concerns that provinces could have. For instance, in Quebec, we're very sensitive to environmental issues, and that's something that our electors are telling us is very important. So. Of course, we have to represent them when, when, when they say that they don't want it on their territory. Now, at the same token, you're right, there are national security concerns, and we do live in a country that has to think uh, cohesively at times, at least. The, the, the discussion right now is very focused on pipelines. I take your point that otherwise it's a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, Mr. Scheer, the leader of the Conservative Party, gave an interview to Radio Canada that I believe is airing tonight, in which the host pressed him many times on this issue, because there is, of course, that tension between the Conservatives' desire to see a pipeline, like, for example, Energy East built, and concerns over jurisdiction that you've expressed today and, and other days. Uh, Mr. Shear was pressed, as I mentioned many times. He says uh, there are provincial jurisdictions, there are federal jurisdictions. He did not say no, you know, a flat-out no. He, he, in a way, left the door open a little bit to the imposition of something like that. I, I want to be clear, though, he didn't say we are going to impose anything. Yeah. What do you think the perception of the lack of, uh, I guess, specificity or clarity in that answer will be in Quebec? And I think that's exactly why we have, uh, you know, elections every four years to make those issues clear. And I think, if anything, that was the intention of, of uh, the Premier of Quebec was to say, hey, these issues are important to Quebecers. We expect an answer. Now, you can choose to go left, you can choose to go right, but please answer the question so that people can make a decision based on the facts. And, you know, wherever the chips fall, I think it's a great thing for democracy, Vashi. Okay, I'll leave it there. Thank you so much, Mr. Skeet. Nice to have, have you back night. on the show. That's Christopher Skeet, Parliamentary Assistant to the Premier for Relations with English-speaking Quebecers. He joins us from Quebec City. As you know, uh, uh, even the federal government recognized that uh, we form a nation. So it's not something that must surprise them, but it has some consequences. And in order to protect our nation, that the Quebec government, which is the one representing this nation, that we get more power in terms of immigration, language, uh, uh, secularism of the state. I think it, we have to be uh, coherent. That was Quebec Premier Francois Legault, perhaps capitalizing on federal leaders' hunger for Quebec seats. Legault has detailed his list of demands today, saying the time is ripe to push for more powers for Quebec. He wants more control over immigration, a single tax form administered by Quebec, and the right to impose the French language charter on federal institutions. The Premier is also asking each federal leader to promise not to intervene legally in any challenges to his secularism legislation, commonly referred to as Bill 21. So will the Premier's gambit work, and how will that go over with voters in the rest of the country. Time for the power panel. Former Conservative Cabinet Minister Stockwell Day joins us from Edmonton, a few hours north, in, south rather, in Calgary, Jason Markasoff of McLean's. Tiffany Gooch, political commentator and columnist, is with us from Toronto. And here with me in studio, political commentator and former NDP MP, Francoise Boivin. Hi, everybody. So hey. nice Hello. to see you. Francoise, I have to start with you. Because Given, of Quebec. Because of I Quebec, know. yes, I'm typecasting here. <laughs> Given the significance of Quebec right now in the federal sort of vote map, how likely do you think it is that Premier Legault gets his wishes fulfilled? Well, I think we already know what the uh, the answer from the Liberals will will be on 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 those topics. I don't think he'll he'll find uh, much interest uh, on from Justin Trudeau. But I think it's more the uh, the image that it's conveying to Quebecers. And and for me, the angle I took was not so much on the uh, four or five things that he wants uh, all leaders to commit to. It's the fact that also at the same time, he re-announced the opening in Ottawa of the uh, Bureau du Québec in Ottawa. Mm -hmm. 
because he said, we are going to represent the interests of Quebecers. I don't know if it, it rings a bell to, to, to the viewers or the panelists here, but that's kind of the logo of the Bloc Québécois. And I think the message from the Premier last week on, on, on Bill 21, and this week on, on the charter uh, for federal uh, 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 chartered uh, companies or corporations or, or, or immigration, I think the message of the Premier is quite clear. We are the one who are going to deal directly with the government. So I want to deal with a leader that will commit to those, to those points, and he's going to put all the weight of his of his popularity, because let's face it, I mean, I, I have not seen a, a, a premier in Quebec in, in a long time being as popular as Francois Legault is. Is he playing to a domestic audience just to follow up, or is this geared I, towards the federal I, scene? I, I think it's, it's a bit of both. I think he's, uh, he's really playing his role well, at the same time maybe removing a bit of the carpet under the feet of the Bloc Québécois because he doesn't, I'm sure his worst scenario is to have uh, too many Bloc Québécois mm -hmm. member of parliament that cannot bring some legislation or, or have really a, a serious impact. So I think he's really looking forward to see, uh, uh, except for the pipeline, I think probably more affinity with the Conservatives uh, in, 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 in uh, François Legault than in any other uh, party. So, Although uh, that pipeline is a major cleavage issue. Yes, them, and, yeah. and there's an interview with, uh, with uh, Andrew Scheer uh, coming out on French uh, Radio-Canada tonight uh, that will uh, start a debate, believe you me, because... Be uh, for that. Yeah. <laughs> Tiffany, yeah. what's your read on the message the, pro the pr uh, Premier rather is trying to send? Yeah, I think at this point it's uh, it's difficult for a premier to identify exactly what their role should be. I'd say in a, in a federal election, should they be campaigning? Should they be putting out a list of uh, of demands for the province to appear as if they're they're really pushing what the issues uh, that they know are important to uh, the people living in their province are? Um, I think uh, it definitely uh, made sense that uh, he would uh, take all of the issues within his mandate and, and uh, lay a, a line in the sand and ask leaders to uh, to respond to that. Um, of course, this is uh, an approach that a lot Lot of different organizations take. The Federation of Canadian Municipalities has put together a wish list. I think uh, as campaigns are receiving those, they'll take a look at them and they'll try to find ways to respond accordingly. And uh, But I think at the end of the day, each party is going to be doing the best that they can to talk directly to voters, uh, to be able to speak directly to Canadians living in Quebec about what it is that they're uh, they're promising that and how that impacts them directly, um, rather than uh, needing to, to work that sort of specifically through a, a premier's list of demands uh, per se uh, versus speaking directly to uh, uh, to the people. And so I think uh, we'll, we'll see a little bit of that, I'd say, on a, a, a personal point and, and for those that are, are really uh, focusing on, on Bill 21 and its impact. Um, uh, there was a lot of language he used around sort of respect across premiers and, and respect in the Federation. And I think uh, that there was, a, I would say, a little bit of a triggering piece for me um, in terms of the respect that he's offering to, to young girls that uh, are wearing hijabs in school and, and hoping to have a career in public service. And, and until that is uh, is, is resolved, it's, it's difficult uh, to say what kind of respect he'll uh, garner from those outside of Quebec as they're as they're seeing this play out, but uh, we'll, we'll see what kind of response uh, comes in, a, in any formal uh, response from parties. Yeah, let me pick up on Bill 21 with you, Stock, because uh, what he said specifically was that he wanted a commitment from all of the federal party leaders that they would not seek to legally intervene in any challenge against that bill. Uh, so far, a number of leaders like Elizabeth May and Andrew Scheer and, and Jagmeet Singh, to a certain extent, have basically said that they haven't guaranteed it, but they've they, they have not opened the door as far as uh, far wide as Justin Trudeau has, who said, you know, he's waiting to see how things played out. He doesn't see the case for it right now, but that he's not ruling it out. How, what's your sort of analysis of how the Bill 21 issue might play for the federal leaders? Like you've been in and obviously uh, on the federal scene, how difficult to, it, would it be to navigate that? It's difficult. That's a great question on a great issue, Vashi. And uh, first, I'm just going to pause and thank the Premier of Quebec for what he's accomplished right now. Because what he's done with putting out this statement, he has forced all the campaigns, believe it or not, to start talking about policy on day seven of the election instead of <laughs> who's, who's got the stinkiest Twitter litter. That's just, that's just been insane the last few days. And I, I think, you know, a tip of the hat to uh, Andrew Scheer. He's the first leader who stood up and said he's not going to be stampeded by this insanity. But Premier Legault has forced everybody to talk about policy. And on this bill that you're talking about, here's what I find interesting and a little bit worrisome. 
Um, each leader on their own, and even within their own party, would never attack religious freedoms. This, this bill clearly attacks religious freedom and freedom of expression. But what they're afraid of as individual leaders, if they come out and say, you know, I'm not going to guarantee we're not going to challenge that legislation, they're worried that the other leaders are going to jump on them and say, there, there's proof you don't care about Quebec. And I would, you know, something I could recommend is the leaders, the top uh, people in each camp, talk among themselves and say, why don't we have an agreement? None of us like this legislation. We all agree it erodes religious freedom. Why don't we just have a deal that, we, that one won't attack the other on that point? We all what stick do you think together and speak for all Canadians. Um, a little bit less than zero, <laughs> but, you know, but, you know, I'm an <laughs> optimist. Idea, yeah. I, I'm an optimist, and it is, it's very discouraging to think that these religious freedoms, I, I know of a situation that happened recently right here in Edmonton, this is even Quebec, but because of that whole thought line, uh, in a large business here, a woman wearing a hijab and a woman who also wears a cross, and they, they just do it as an expression, were both told they couldn't come to work wearing that. And this is in a private sector institution because people might get offended. So we, we're getting this erosion of, of expression, in this case religious, which I think is very dangerous. And really I'd like to see the leaders unequivocally stand up and speak for that. Jason, because of the electoral significance of Quebec in this election, a ton of focus, and, and thanks to the Premier's comments as well, has been placed on what's being said, how things are being absorbed in that province. What's the reaction to that, or is there one in Alberta? Well, I mean, Jason Kenney and uh, Saskatchewan Premier Scott Moe have uh, laid out their uh, demands for quite a while now, uh, you know, in unequivocal support of pipelines, getting rid of the Assessment Act Bill C-69 and such. And uh, by and large, none of the leaders are responding to them. And I think that that's not a big surprise. It certainly drives a lot of skepticism about a lot of the parties uh, out here. I mean, if there's any, ever been a time for uh, um, Legault or a Quebec Premier to try to flex their political muscles, it's now. We have a, a situation in which two of the largest issues in the country um, have very, very different public views in Quebec than they do in the rest of the country. It's almost as bifurcated uh, national opinion, where you have in Quebec, uh, there's much more support for Bill 21 and much more support for, uh, you know, this uh, supporting SNC-Lavalin at any cost. Um, and all the leaders have to straddle that line, um, managing both the uh, rest of Canada and Quebec uh, views on those things. Um, I don't think that that's going to make uh, any uh, politicians uh, say yes or or kowtow to um, Lego any, any more than they already are, um, but certainly he has a much better chance than almost any other premier in the country at getting his wish. Hi, I'm Vashi Capellos, host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video. Thanks for watching.